Hey guys, we're back down in the workshop. Now out of all the projects that I have to do down here, I've got one that's I think is going to be a little bit more interesting than the other ones. It's been sitting down here for a while. It's a lightning detector. Now it's not going to be a scratch built lightning detector. It's a project that is run by a group of volunteers. I can't really pronounce it, but you can go look up that URL. Basically what it is, uh, it is a magnetic field and an electric field uh, antennas that look for very low frequency pulses that are generated when uh, lightning strikes happen. The board uses time of flight um, to basically triangulate the location of where, where the lightning strike uh, took place. It gets the time from a GPS module, so the GPS can give it a very, very accurate time of when the pulse arrived at my station. Uh, then it can, you know, with all the stations that are, that are around, it can basically tell uh, where the signal uh, came from. So the board consists of the, uh, the, main, the main circuit board, an amplifier board for the magnetic field antennas and an amplifier circuit board for the electric field antennas. The plan for today is to solder all the parts on uh, and hopefully get the board powered up, run some test wires to the, the two amplifier boards, make sure they power up, uh, and then they include an electric field antenna, uh, just a test uh, electric field antenna. So we'll see if we can get the board uh, connected to to the online system and see if we can uh, get any signals. Uh, so let's get started. So if you navigate to their website you get a live map of lightning strikes that are occurring in, uh, in various locations around the world. So you can see when a lightning strike happens, all the, the volunteer stations that detect the, uh, the signal, and then it's triangulated back to a uh, specific location. Uh, I don't know how well my mouse pointer is gonna show up, but you can see in Northwestern Ontario where I am, there's absolutely no stations that are recording um, any signals. The, uh, it's quite surprising, there's probably about north of 200,000 people in, in my area, uh, in my general area, and, uh, and no one has signed up for this project. So, uh, so I'm pretty excited to, to get it going. Again, the whole goal is to see if I can get my, uh, my station registered and uh, maybe even detecting, uh, detecting some signals. So like I said, this board has been sitting down here for quite a while, probably about eight months now. I feel a little bit bad uh, because my friend of mine initially uh, directed me to this website because he thought the project was kind of interesting. I thought it was interesting too, so I put my name on, uh, on the mailing list. And it took them about two years to contact me saying, you know, the boards are ready and, and I was next in line for one. I kind of put it off and then I got a, a follow-up email saying, you know, if you don't respond in 10 days, then we're going to offer your board to, to someone else. Uh, so I figured, you know, I ordered it. I'll get around to it eventually. Uh, so what I ended up ordering was the bare circuit board. I got a bag of components, a magnetic field antenna, and a GPS antenna. So, first things first, we'll get all these components soldered on. There isn't that many, uh, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, so what we're gonna do is detach the, uh, the two antenna amplifiers and then populate the board. So let's get started.
Okay, so there we are, all the sharp edges filed off the two amplifier boards, main boards in the holder. Let's get started. Okay, all the components are soldered on. The uh, connections seem to be okay. I didn't connect the headers onto the magnetic field antennas uh, with the antennas that I have that were supplied with the kit. The wires are so small that you just basically solder them directly onto, onto the pads. Um, the wires are pretty thin, so you strip off 
there is a clear coating on on these wires you strip it off then you solder them directly onto onto the pads i'm going to mount this in a uh, in a small uh, project box first uh, and then uh, hopefully the, everything stays waterproof when i eventually mount it outside i did mount the header onto the electric field uh, I'm going to test it out with the, the test antenna and if that works pretty well, gives me pretty good range, then I'm going to leave it on, um, otherwise I'll put a piece of wire to act as the electric field antenna, see if I can extend the range from the, uh, from the signals that I'm detecting. Now this board can be run with either the magnetic field the electric field or both antennas running I'm gonna run it with both I'm pretty sure you get longer range from from the magnetic field uh, antennas I'm still working out how to mount these eventually they're going to be this whole setup is going to be mounted in the new garage uh, that I'm building it's kind of an ideal uh, ideal place to put it there isn't too many uh, electrical uh, lines running through that garage uh, plus there's internet and power close by so I can mount the, the antennas outside and the cable length isn't very uh, isn't going to be very long with the magnetic field uh, antennas they it doesn't matter what orientation they are in terms of north south or anything the only thing is that the antennas do have to be mounted uh, at 90 degrees to each other and um, level so in that configuration you get the maximum uh, signal from uh, from the pulses that uh, you'll be detecting uh, if they're you know off by a little bit the only thing that'll happen is you'll decrease uh, decrease your signal intensity but you want maximum signal intensity so you can get the maximum range out of uh, out of your device detect signals from as far away as possible so the next order of operations, <laughs> next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be plugging it in. There's a series of lights on the uh, LEDs on the underside of the board. Basically, from uh, left to right, they give you the power mode. Not sure what mode is. Uh, network. So if you have a a, a network uh, IP address and everything's talking on your network, that light comes up fault. I'm not sure what the fault light is, but it doesn't sound like it's a good light to uh, to have lit up. Next one is GPS. So when the GPS has acquired a uh, a signal, that light comes on, and then there's another alarm light. I'm pretty sure that's not a good one if it shows up. And then signal. I'm assuming it uh, it lights up when it detects a signal. The documentation again. This is a, a, a volunteer based. Um, project so the documentation is pretty good uh, but you do have to read kind of between the lines for for a couple things no big deal again so what we're going to do next is plug the uh, the power supply in with nothing else attached make sure the power light comes on and then plug it into my network see if I can get an IP address and then log into the uh, the firmware on the board so uh, yeah let's give that a try and uh, hopefully everything works out all right, so we have our five volt USB power supply. The power jumper is on. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I have the power LED lit up and the mode LED lit up. So I'm assuming that's a good thing. Looks like uh, looks like everything is working. I'm gonna grab a network cable here and plug in the network. All right, here we go. <laughs> Back in business. So, so standard network port. Those lights should come on. All right, network light, network light on the board is on. We seem to be communicating with the network. Okay, next thing is to log on to my router. 
and grab the IP address that the DHCP server assigned to uh, to this board. All right, so let's see if we can find that. All right, so the IP address it grabbed is 192.168.1.113. So just enter that into a web browser and we should be able to see, there it is. Well, that's pretty cool. This is the first time I have looked at uh, at this. So everything seems to be running fine. Uh, next thing we're going to do is plug in the GPS antenna. Alright, so this is the first time I'm actually looking at this uh, this controller. Uh, it looks like everything's normal. It's talking to their server fine. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is plug in the GPS antenna. Now, I don't know how far we're going to get here. <laughs> I'm in the basement of my house. We will try and get uh, a GPS signal here. Pretty standard GPS antenna. Okay, so plug her in. And we'll wait for it to acquire a GPS signal. Okay, I'm back. It's been about a half an hour. Things are going pretty well. Uh, I updated the firmware. I put the GPS antenna in the uh, in the window, and it's picked up a signal. This firmware is really nice. It gives you a lot of information. I've also registered this device on my account. So the next thing to do is to hook up the um, electric field detector and like I said it already has the test antenna on it so there's an LED on here that will illuminate if the device has power and on the firmware we'll see if it detects the amplifier <clears throat> plug it in here Difficult to do with one hand. There we go, now we're threading on. Okay, we have an LED. It beeped. Looks like, yeah, it is seeing the electric field all right not recording any signals but I'll mount this a little bit higher by the window and see what we get